thanks everybody. Uh, Derek Lapointe with Downtown Moorhead Inc. and uh, uh, Economic Development for the City of Moorhead. Thanks for uh, being on here this morning, this Friday morning. We're really, really excited to um, share the downtown master plan that we've been working on for uh, over a year now. So this is um, this has been a great uh, collaborated effort between um, DMI and the city of Moorhead, and then ultimately the hiring of Stantec, uh, which we have Beth Elliott and David Dixon and Joe Polichuk that I'll, I'll turn over to here just in a minute. Um, but ultimately who we have on the call today, and I'm getting a little getting feedback, a little so feedback. just mute yourself if you're joining us. Um, who we have as the meeting today is the Downtown Moorhead Inc. Board, the Moorhead City Council, uh, current and as well as some uh, elected that are coming in. We also have the Planning Commission, members of the EDA, and the Arts and Culture Commission. We thought it was a good opportunity to share the, the plan with you all uh, this morning. We are recording the, the sections today. We're gonna have the presentation that Stantec is gonna give. Uh, we do ask that your questions come in through the chat box where myself and Joe will, will manage. Uh, but we want the first you know, half hour, 45 minutes to go towards Stantec so they can kind of get into the plan, walk through it, and then we'll have that recorded that we can share to the public uh, at a later time. Ultimately, the goal is to, uh, one, present the plan, uh, answer questions that you may have at the end, and then ultimately look for uh, EDA approval next week, um, my board, Downtown Moorhead Inc.'s approval next week, and then going to City Council on December 14th for uh, adoption and uh, approval. We think this is a, a great plan. Stantec's done great work, but more than anything, the public has really given us uh, amazing feedback through this plan. We've set unprecedented uh, numbers for public engagement, and this plan reflects it. This is a, a document that the public created, uh, which is what I'm really most excited about, uh, and I really think that's gonna give us traction to build off of some of these goals and initiatives, and ultimately uh, create a downtown that's inviting for everyone, um, it's healthy, and, and it's really something this community can be proud of. So with that, uh, again, as you're coming in, please mute yourself. Uh, if you have questions, put it through the chat box and uh, we'll manage that at the end and I'll pass it over to Beth. Thanks, Beth. Great, thank you. I'm Beth Elliott. Um, I'm with Stantec. Um, I'm a senior planner and I'm the project manager. Uh, David Dixon is with us. He's the principal in charge, um, part of the Stantec Urban Places Group. We do a lot of thinking um, and analyzing of how best to move downtowns forward. Uh, and so we're lucky to have David. We also have Joe uh, Polachek, who has been an urban planner on this project. And many of you have seen Joe in our engagement. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to try uh, sharing my screen. Uh, you know, it's always, you know, hold your breath. Um, <laughs> and then I'm going to pass it off to David. And David and I are going to tag team the presentation. And as Derek said, we are recording. And one of the big reasons that Derek has requested we record is to make sure that um, if DMI or the city or others want to be able to use this presentation in other venues, uh, you all can do that. So um, let me, David, can you say yes, that you can see my screen? Uh, and a word, yes. Okay, let's see, let me get back to the presentation. Yeah. Do you actually see the presentation version or do you see the, the I slide see the deck on the left? I see the presentation version. Perfect, okay, so um, David's gonna just kick us off. Okay, uh, thank you. And you know, why don't we go right to the next slide. And first of all, I wanna say it is terrific to see so many of you here and particularly because many of you are now familiar faces. This has been a wonderful process to be part of. And we, I, have been pleased and honored. Uh, and I'm going to actually start out by making the case, I hope convincingly, certainly something we believe, that this has been exactly the right time to do this plan and that there are dramatic changes going on across our country accelerated and made more visible by COVID, but maybe not changed by COVID, have set the stage. So next, please. David, do you see the the slide with the little kid right now? Uh, no, I see downtown Moorhead master plan. Okay, so I think that I'm having challenges with this. Let me get back to this one second. Okay, let me see if this will work. Perfect, okay. All right, 
see it? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, so, uh, as everybody on this call knows, we are in the midst of a worldwide pandemic, um, and this is a pandemic that happened that that occurred after we started this process. And uh, I know from working with lots of folks in lots of cities, one of the things they're immediately curious about is what has changed. Uh, among many things they're curious about. And I want to start out by sort of noting that. Um, there is an increased interest in uh, walking in green neighborhoods. Uh, I think this is actually from, from uh, Moorhead. Uh, I think if anything, we have come to value community and our neighborhoods even more, particularly those of us who live in cities. One of the things that's really important to note because uh, here we are talking about a wonderful city and it's downtown, that uh, COVID actually does not, has not correlated with density. Uh, it has correlated actually with poverty much more directly uh, and, and other indicators. Uh, and there's been a sort of a meme out there that folks are leaving cities and going to suburbs. In fact, uh, for most cities and suburbs, uh, markets have not changed relative to each other. It's, it's very large, expensive cities that some folks have moved away from. Um, the fundamental trends that were shaping the future of, uh, or the future opportunities, I should say, for downtown Moorhead before uh, the advent, the, the arrival of the pandemic are firmly in place. And I'm going to run through those quickly. Many of you probably heard us talk about them, but it's worth remembering. Um, next, please. So it starts with a new era of urban opportunity uh, that grow from demographic change. Just next, please. Uh, and essentially, uh, while for years, when I was growing up and I turned on a television, this is what the world looked like. And the thing you are supposed to most notice, I need to get a little more racial diversity in here because it was diverse then too, um, but it was full of kids, families with kids. Families with kids dominated and shaped the U.S. housing market from the end of World War II, probably up until about the end of about 2000. Um, since then, and accelerating oh, for the next 20 years, uh, if you turn on any media, we look much different. Uh, we, are, look, we are much more diverse. Uh, but the other major change is if you look at household growth for the next 20 years, two decades, and household growth is our housing market, our housing market is two thirds of our real estate economy where demographics go, housing goes, and our communities go. So going forward for the next two decades, 80 plus percent of net new households, and this is as true of, of uh, Moorhead and its surrounding region as anywhere else, will be singles and couples uh, without kids. This is the most urban housing market we have had. Every city, region across the US, uh, even New York City right now, uh, has a, an undersupply of multifamily housing. Think lofts, townhouses, um, you know, living, living near a cool coffee place or brewery. Um, and uh, that represents a, a, a huge source of demand for investment in our downtowns, certainly downtown Moorhead. Uh, an unprecedented opportunity. So we have an opportunity. We also have an imperative. Um, uh, next, please. Uh, so, uh, you know, fewer households with kids. Guess what happens? Our workforce force starts to grow a lot more slowly. Today, our workforce is growing basically 50 at 50% 50 of the rate it did before 2010. In 2040, we'll still gain fewer net new workers than we did in 2010. Uh, right now, 90 plus percent of net new jobs, not all jobs, net new jobs, uh, so job growth requires some form of higher education. Where folks with higher education want to live is where jobs and investment go. And those folks want to live in lively, walkable downtowns uh, and, and cool urban places and suburbs too. But they want livability, community, amenity, and emphasize again community. So what's happening? Um, while housing prices in urban places that are walkable have been rising a lot faster than their suburban counterparts or places that aren't walkable, office rents, what we pay for where we work, have been rising much faster. Uh, a lot of uh, questions about, well, what's happening to our workplace because of COVID? And it's very likely that a growing number of us will be working remotely. 
particularly interesting is that folks who don't have kids who work remotely are even more interested in living in an urban place where they can find the community they don't find at work than their peers. And the, the parts of our economy that are growing fastest, innovation, knowledge, really need us close together so we can brainstorm together and, and innovate. Next, please. So it's, it is still about downtown. And then uh, we've got technology. Um, next, please. Uh, two impact, there are all kinds of impacts, but two to really take note of. Uh, everyone here probably has shopped on Amazon at some point in the last 10 minutes, no, uh, recently. Uh, when Amazon and online retail started to really um, make an impact on uh, clothing and the kinds of goods that we all thought everyone wanted to go in the store and try on, it became clear that the, what the, the future was gonna be different. Uh, so what is happening, as we all know, is uh, big box retail, auto-oriented retail, um, uh, standard merchandise retail is shrinking in terms of square footage. Uh, 500 malls will fail in the next couple of years across the U.S., for example. Um, what is succeeding is the uh, uh, food, uh, experiential uh, art, fun, uh, but particularly coffee, beer, and places that bring people together. This is the retail that thrives in downtowns and urban neighborhoods where people can walk to this retail. It is walkable retail that is thriving. 50% of all retail leases uh, in the last, uh, last year, 2019, were for restaurants or other places serving food. And boy, a much larger share of these were urban and downtown than from previous decades. Uh, and second, as you probably all heard, how we move around is going to change and dramatically. So over the next 20 years, a lot faster than I think many of us thought, um, <clears throat> uh, how we move our, our, our autonomy, our mobility will change. Um, uh, just next, please, just to get through the, so uh, over, um, um, well, while a lot of us think the future means we'll get in a car, our wonderful new Tesla that will drive us 20 miles while we play computer games to the suburbs, that's not actually what these trends are likely to do. This is what the future mobility will look much more like for most of us, which are shared autonomous vehicles. You press a button, a vehicle shows up very quickly, in a downtown, a city like Moorhead, you're a critical mass of people and destinations. You don't have to worry about parking. You don't have to worry about maintaining a vehicle. You can call whatever kind of vehicle you need when you need it. And it quickly takes you to where you want to go, as opposed to folks who live in less dense sort of suburban environments uh, who where they will not, they, that won't have the critical mass of people and destinations to support this level of convenience. Uh, one of the things I would note is it will cut the cost, uh, What, how many dollars a household has to spend on mobility if you can have shared mobility, shared AVs, by about 50% compared to what we pay today. It will be a subsidy to live in downtown Moorhead. So um, that future is maybe 20 some odd years off. Over the next decade, we're going to shift to connected vehicles. We'll still drive them, but one of the big changes is they will park themselves. And boy, they park themselves a lot more conveniently, uh, uh, compactly than we do. We get out of the car, maybe at the entrance to the parking ramp or garage and say, go park yourself. Uh, and off they go. Um, that means every parking facility in America, in Moorhead, will be able to hold 20, 30% more cars than it does today. That means we can begin to add new development, add new housing, new off, new places to work, play, have fun, without having to pay for the very expensive parking that's been required to date. And then by the mid to early 2040s, we are in the era of autonomous and most probably shared autonomous mobility. So all of this, all of these trends together suggest a very bright future for downtown Moorhead and a greater importance for all of Moorhead in the region uh, uh, for downtown. Downtown success will be more critical for everyone in the city and region. Uh, and this has begun to translate into a real market. So um, <clears throat> we've worked with some terrific consultants who basically say uh, the next 10 years, 
we can expect 50 to 75 new multifamily housing units every year in downtown. That's 300 and something oh, just over the next five years. But that number that the rate of growth is going to increase to 100 or and then over the next five years and after 10 years, probably more than 100 downtown markets tend to grow at a faster rate as they develop uh, retail. Um, well, in most places, I would be very uncertain about any retail projection um, um, because retail that grows is retail supported by uh, nearby housing uh, and downtown should uh, attract a lot more housing. Um, I would say probably you'll still get a fair amount of uh, more retail downtown, probably not in the inside the mall it will be lining streets uh which means it'll encourage people to go out and walk around and and uh sort of help build a sense of community um office um is probably the most uncertain at this point but i will point out that if you don't have office space then you have more people working from home and these are the people who are more likely to start new businesses um so um, I, uh, well, we may have less office square footage. We may certainly still have the same growth in jobs downtown. Uh, uh, thank you, David. Uh, so, uh, yeah, David, if you could mute, that would be great. Uh, so what David has described is, uh, you know, uh, what is happening during COVID, how we still have um, a lot of confidence in the growth in downtowns and uh, demographics still choosing downtown urban environments. Uh, ultimately, uh, we this is about Moorhead and what David was describing about the market is still really in line with national trends. Um, National trends are going to be driven by residential, as David has, has has emphasized multiple times. And so if we get the next five years right, create that vibrancy, that place. I always talk about it in terms of development. The, the If a developer is walking around downtown Moorhead, what can they envision for their investment? That's the type of um, uh, work that we all have to do over the next five years. Uh, as we kind of developed this process for the Moorhead Comprehensive Plan or the, the Downtown Master Plan, we talked to people about these trends. We talked to people about what the market is going to do. Um, and as Derek said, we had tremendous participation, particularly really early on in the plan. We had uh, a survey last uh, in summer, I think uh, late summer of 2019, that garnered over 700 uh, participants. That is almost unheard of for uh, a, a survey that people opt into. The first phase of the project was really developing the vision. We cannot decide as uh, a DMI board, as the city necessarily, as your consultants exactly where this needs to go without uh, tremendous feedback for from your uh, from your residents and businesses. And so the first thing we ask in the process is where do you want this to go? And we asked it in a variety of creative ways. We asked uh, what's your six word story for the future of downtown Moorhead? And we had a lot. We, we had uh, a game about um, uh, uh, if you ha were a council member or the mayor, how you, would you uh, invest money um, after this plan is done if you had limited funds? And so we started to, even from the beginning, uh, talk to the public about uh, the trade-offs that are necessary as we're developing downtown and, and revitalizing downtown. We heard things like need family-friendly places. We heard that a lot, particularly places that families can go during the winter. One of the quotes Quotes that we had from the six word story process is um, it's a little city that can become um, Moorhead has a potential for greatness. Let's get centered on Center Avenue. We heard a lot of excitement in that first phase about the possibilities for downtown. It seems like you're as a city at this cusp of people really seeing themselves in downtown on a regular basis. Um, so many people talked about the asset of the adjacent riverfront. So it, it the, what we really tried to focus on in this plan is how you can make 
the river a front yard or a backyard of uh, downtown, particularly around the mall site. Uh, and, you know, people want experiences. Downtown is not going to be successful unless it's populated with people. People during the day working, people shopping, walking on the sidewalks, riding their bikes, people there in the on the nights and weekends. Um, it needs to look lively. It needs to look that the, like there's something going on and people really get that. And of course, as you know, art was something that we heard about all the time when we asked about what is the future of downtown Moorhead? How do you keep that authentically Moorhead? It's different than Fargo. Um, and while there's been a lot of great success for downtown Fargo, we need to see how we can complement that and make downtown Moorhead unique. So that this is a lot of the feedback we received from the public as we developed the vision that David's going to talk about in just a second. Um, and then uh, we went back to the public uh, last winter, right before COVID. Um, and many of you might have participated in the workshops in early February, which sounded crazy to do, but it really worked and it really got a lot of people on the ground looking at the issues standing on the sidewalk and having this huge mound of snow between you and busy traffic uh david and derek and i spent a lot of time walking around uh and slipping on sidewalks uh as we went from meeting to meeting um so it really was important for people to get outside and experience these issues um and then we developed this this framework for the character and the functionality for downtown um and at various times during that process we checked in with many of you um uh, on uh, how this process is evolving, making sure that we have touch points before we move on to the next level of uh, engagement and analysis. Go ahead, David. You're on mute, David. Thank you very much. It's an occupational hazard these days. Thank you. Um, so. Uh, and incidentally, uh, both the the uh, the images to the, the right uh, represent uh, redevelopment of once thriving malls or strip retail or uh, places that have changed as the demo our demographics and economy, et cetera, have changed uh, and in ways that sort of suggest maybe opportunities for Moorhead. That said, um, every good plan starts with a mission, and this we got from, from all of you. Uh, it is uh, about uh, not development for its own sake. This is not leveraging leveraging demand for walkable for down for downtown and walkable for walkable downtown and, and uh, walk, walkable living. Meaning, don't just develop for its own sake. Develop in ways that really make downtown a walkable place, a place where people run into each other and it, it, it celebrates community. Um, take advantage of the shifts in a regional economy, uh, which are going to be toward more knowledge jobs and bring them downtown. Uh, increase the convenience of downtown and also actually decrease the cost of living for everybody. Um, and that has to do with changing mobility and offering a broader array of housing options uh, and um, similar initiatives. Um, so uh, what are the values that that uh, we really heard from you, which were just wonderful and entirely consistent with this mission? It's about a small town feel with big city opportunities. And I would say you can maintain the first and build more of the second. Um, it is a place that where it really brings people together and is uh, to share experience, a uh, place to, to eat, to gather, to celebrate. Um, a place where, as um, uh, Beth mentioned, uh, the local arts community uh, can display what they do. One of the really exciting opportunities is sort of digital art. So uh, artists can actually create a new, new, a new personality, new experience every day. Um, it is about nature and culture combined. You have this wonderful river. Uh, you have some really terrific cultural venues. It's uh, can you use public art to bring them together, for example. Uh, engaging the colleges and which are, are really the, 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 the centers of innovation, colleges, universities, 
Uh, and uh, in downtown as a place where their students and faculty and staff live, but also a place that creates the kind of lively experience that makes them more competitive as institutions, as places, because people go to places both to study and to work that they like to be in this day and age. Um, and of course, um, really emphasize downtown as the center and that means the center of the of its account for the more more in the region economic center but it's also about a center that actively invites everybody the full spectrum the full diversity of the folks who are moorhead today to come together and so how does all this translate into goals that shape a plan a place that's authentic and authentic is not about mimicking you know, what Moorhead looked like 20, 40, or 100 years ago. It's about bringing the living culture, those artists, the, sh the chefs, the people who create music, the uh, people who perform into the center of downtown so that every day is authentic uh, to Moorhead. It's about what it, it's representing the, the living culture of Moorhead, vibrant, active. This has a whole lot to do with housing. Get a thousand units of housing downtown over the next 10 years, you'll have a lot more retail, um, arts, food, et cetera, for people to enjoy within a short walk of each other, um, and which will then attract more folks to come want to live and work downtown, invest in downtown. It's about equitable and inclusive. It's about making sure that the opportunities that come to downtown are available to everybody, but it's also about creating a public realm that actively invites different kinds of folks to all want to be there together because we have different things we want to do outside based on age or our culture. It's about resilient, uh, both in term, from an environmental standpoint, uh, but also in terms of, of uh, economic and, and from a social perspective. And it's about connected uh, and, you know, going forward, that will be at some point introducing mobility innovation to get people in and around downtown, but at present making sure it's an inviting place to walk, to bike, uh, to drive, um, uh, and, uh, and, and convenient and fully accessible to everybody across your wonderful community. So, so how does that mission uh, values and goals translate on the ground? So one of the first things we did early on in this process was start to develop what we were originally calling a strategy map. It's kind of a framework for how you start to kind of look at the character of downtown and where you want that character to go. And it, downtown is not a monolith. It doesn't have one unique uh, feature that transcends every area. So what we did in, uh, originally was downtown into three kind of character districts the moorhead center district which is surrounding the mall the mixed use district which is kind of to the south and east of that 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 hub in the center and the creative pioneers district mainly east of kind of uh eighth sort of east of 11th but where there's really interesting stuff happening uh and then we started to look at the streets in the middle of all of those uh character defining features and starting to figure out how can we prioritize different Different modes on the streets and then of course open spaces is a critical factor in to making a downtown successful successful much of this open space is surrounding downtown along the river but it's really important to have active open spaces of varying sizes in the heart of downtown too so I'm just going to go through each of these character districts and street types uh, quickly. So obviously uh, in the heart of downtown, the Moorhead Center District, if we don't get this right, uh, we don't get the catalytic effects of uh, what it could do for the rest of downtown. So right here, this is the bullseye for public realm enhancements, for density, maximizing that employment and retail, making sure it's as walkable and interesting as possible, but particularly those social interactions. Um, the next district is the downtown mixed use district. This is where we have this really well established street grid. We have uh, established businesses. It is a, a walkable district that could be much more walkable, um, but it's really meant to serve the daily needs where maybe the Moorhead Center district is, is more of that destination for families and others. Uh, still really kind of catering to a mix of uses around here, but maybe not as much housing density. 
and the Creative Pioneers District. This is what's been so cool about uh, reinvestment in downtown is that it happens in unique buildings. It happens in reuse situations. It happens, uh, you know, funky breweries are doing it in downtowns everywhere and in suburbs. But you have these these a lot of industrial buildings and auto oriented buildings that could potentially be retrofitted to other really unique uses. And you don't want to kind of confine that. So the Creative Pioneers District is meant to prioritize this creative energy and build on that um, and allow for innovative activities. And when I say allow, you know, I'm a planner. I a lot of times think about zoning. You want to make sure that the, the regulatory environment is flexible for what the market's going to give you. Um, you still want it to be really safe for walking and biking. Uh, and public art is going to continue to be a huge component in a downtown, but particularly in the Creative Pioneers District. Street types, uh, like I said, bullseye right on Center Avenue in front of the mall. This is where we have to uh, maximize the the uses, the, the modes, biking, walking, transit, cars. It has to be a really safe, cool walking environment. This is really symbiotic with any redevelopment or reinvestment in the mall. The, the Center Avenue and the mall have to be thought of as tied together intricately for the success of, uh, of downtown. Uh, we wanna make sure to uh, uh, introduce more curbside parking, uh, particularly on Center Avenue, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, but placemaking is gonna be a big part of this. How do you create activities and, and interests um, uh, here, like Frostival and other elements, uh, to make sure that it continues to thrive. Walking streets, uh, another type of street. This is just kind of uh, uh, a category that we've identified for lower volume streets, lower uh, speed streets, pedestrian uh, focused, on street parking where possible, less on transit, um, but uh, still a really good place to, to walk and be. Complete streets, we've heard this term a lot. This is where you try to balance all your interests in one in one corridor. And uh, Main Avenue is gonna be a big part of that, some elements of, of Center Avenue, but it is a space for all users. So we really need to strike that balance of walking, biking, and driving. And you know, we have a photo here of an example of how to do that. Um, uh, On-street parking is again a priority, particularly on Main. And I will say that, this is these street types and character districts are going to be very familiar to a lot of you. This has developed and evolved and you've seen different iterations as we've gotten feedback from you and also particularly feedback from the technical staff at the city uh, just to make sure that this is really working for the space that's out there and the varying interests at the county, the city and the state for the roads. Safe vehicular streets, it was really important to still say, hey, cars need to go through downtown. And these are the streets that we really want to prioritize that for the highest vehicle throughput and speeds. You'll see a lot of that, particularly on first heading into Fargo. The open space network, uh, again, a major component of the character of downtown. Uh, you know, so, a lot of downtowns have a river, but it's so unique that your river basically envelops your downtown on multiple sides. And so how do we take advantage of key locations, maybe directly outside of the mall location? Um, how do we create better direct connections from the river uh, into downtown and vice versa, as well as visibility from like the, the Center Avenue bridge and um, and so this, uh, and there's more details in the plan about just how to uh, kind of frame those waterfront nodes in blue along the river uh, for varying levels of uh, uh, programming, let's say, and then placemaking inside uh, of downtown. Uh, this representation up in the left-hand corner is from Confluence, and it's a great perspective of what kind of a premier uh, public plaza in the heart of downtown can look and feel like. We also uh, created design guidelines. I'm not going to get into detail, uh, extensive detail here. There's a lot more detail on the plan, but just to show you that um, how buildings are designed is going to be important. Uh, we don't want to be too prescriptive, but we want to make sure that we focus on sustainability, you know, hiding mechanical equipment when possible. Lighting is going to be a big part of having kind of, uh, uh, you know, as 
right this time of year when it gets dark at 4 30 making sure people can still stay in downtown and walk around at night uh winter city design is a big part of how we think about our cities and how need to continue thinking about our cities where are do we have wind tunnels man we've all been in those um how do we design our public spaces so they're shaded less how do we bring out all of these uh heaters that we've all pro uh, bought for our backyards how do we do that more in the public realm new streets and particularly connections to the river so going back to the Moorhead Center District in the heart of downtown, these are just kind of precedent images of what it could be like, but really uh, prioritizing those civic spaces and the streetscape around them using public art. David talks a lot about interactive art that you can kind of change on a daily basis and that people can actually uh, perform their own art using interactive technology. Uh, architectural design, parking design and location are going to be, be <coughs> big parts of the Moorhead Center District. Moving into the downtown mixed use district, very similar elements, but maybe a little bit more low key, still focusing on the pedestrian environment, but making sure that it's a really great living environment um, as well. In the Creative Pioneers District, I think we all have kind of an idea in our heads where this could go. Uh, one six word story at the beginning of the process called uh, Downtown Moorhead, the hippie little sister arts mm. culture business, which I always like to think about. And I always think that people are kind of thinking about the brewery and other elements in the Creative Pioneers District with that. But we want to leave this area really flexible, as I've said, to what um, to, to what is going to inspire property owners and entrepreneurs and others. Uh, the transportation network, we did study uh, uh, where bikes should go, where pets should go. I know these maps are small. There's larger versions in the plan itself. But ultimately, a lot of this analysis is what influenced the street types that I've talked about. Oh, parking, uh, you know, parking is a really uh, emotional topic everywhere. Um, what we heard a lot from the public early on is that there's plenty of parking in downtown. They just don't know where they can park. They don't know if they can stay in one place and go to multiple businesses. And so we did at, a, 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 at some level study the parking. What you hear is see here is how uh, how busy it is and the red is really are really the only places where it's busy in the middle of the day. The rest of downtown is pretty quite open for parking. Um, but where this plan went is um, prioritizing on street parking where feasible, making it feel more like a downtown, uh, giving more opportunities for parking on the street, but also putting those barriers between pedestrians and cars, um, making that feel like a buffer. So where we actually prioritized this was on Center Avenue and Main, mostly kind of west of 11th. Um, and we have some parking management uh, uh, recommendations in here at a high level, but really just, you know, before you really get into managing parking at a downtown, you really want to set a formalized uh, set of principles uh, that are, you know, commonly adhered to for what you're really trying to do. And this plan starts, um, as I mentioned, on street parking on main and center, and then establishing some kind of entity. This doesn't have to be crazy formal. It doesn't have to be a new position, but just someone either at the city or DMI who's thinking about parking management on a regular basis. And these would be the the initial first steps that you could take in thinking about uh, how to make sh how to make your parking more of a system like the streets are. So we're going to start getting into implementation here, and I know we're going short on time, but I just wanted to say in particular that what David really talked about is setting the stage for downtowns, particularly a downtown like Moore and Moorhead, um, the mission and the values and the goals that were established at this high level umbrella for how we make decisions in this planning process. You saw the framework for how uh, conceptually how open spaces will play out out density, uh, how streets will act. Implementation is the critical factor here because this is this plan is not going to be successful unless you have a critical path to actually implementing it.
And so in the plan, there are just a few really high uh, level uh, particular strategies that we've outlined. And I will also say for a lot of these strategies, we offer funding sources because we know that the CIP uh, and the DMI budget is not going to cover uh, what needs to be done. And so fun actually looking for additional funding sources beyond the existing financing tools you have like TIF and the Renaissance Zone are going to be critical to getting things done. So placemaking can happen from day one. So the first thing you can do is evaluate locations of existing events for how they function, how you can have more of a presence for these uh, events like Frostival and other events. Folkways was a, a part of our team and Joe and his staff over there did a lot of thinking about how from the moment the plan is approved, you can start activating various spaces to get people coming downtown and getting excited about the future of downtown. Uh, one other thing beyond that is evaluating the permitting, permitting process at the city just to make sure that there's uh, uh, no unnecessary barriers uh, to doing events in downtown. And then analyzing city owned properties. These are some of the best places to have just events uh, and activities. So conducting a feasibility study of adding outdoor components to existing city owned facilities. You know, one of those places was uh, the parking lot behind the Rourke. Um, how can that potentially be used? Uh, so I'm going to turn this over to David because the Moorhead Mall strategy is probably the most important strategy that we have in this plan. And David's going to go into some of those details of the critical path. Okay, and I'm going to speak in headlines to leave as much time for questions and answers here. Uh, but uh, the most important message here probably is that the mall has a much brighter future, uh, probably than than much of even downtown, because it is a large site under uh, well, it's almost a, a, under two ownerships, I guess mm -hmm. the the city and their and and partners. Uh, which means it's much easier to redevelop something, uh, you know, when you've got 10, 20, 30, 40 acres than if you have to buy a bunch of individual properties. This means that in an era in which a lot more folks are going to want to live, actually work, play, innovate, drink beer, coffee, et cetera, downtown, redeveloping the mall is a, it's like a gift from the past. It's almost as if this, it's been land banked for the economy and the real estate economy that's headed to downtown Moorhead. It's a terrific place to bring change to life. And uh, and the market prognosis should be, uh, is is quite strong. So, so please have confidence in the ability to change it. Now, this said, next please. Um, uh, it, uh, uh, there are lots of options here. Uh, one of which might be to try and just sort of refill it as it is. Uh, uh, probably not the most promising, uh, but it's certainly, this is something that could be phased. So initially we could develop basically in front of the mall, uh, new places, new housing, maybe retail on the ground floor, places to get coffee, et cetera. Uh, the small plaza could begin to become and could grow into a new town green for, for Moorhead. Uh, next, please. Um, over time, we can begin to bring streets through, basically bring the streets of downtown into and through the mall site. Uh, next, please. Uh, and as the market supports this change, uh, literally connect right through the mall, frankly, to the river. If, this is probably the, one of the most natural and organic ways to make the river in downtown one. Um, I want to note that this is not all about necessarily about um, living and working and retail. This is a great place uh, for hopefully a new city hall. Um, there have been a number of suggestions for uses for the tower, some of them cultural. Uh, if you needed a new library, it'd be a great place. Think of a town green supported by uh, some places to grab coffee and ice cream, a library and a, and a new town hall that's a really a civic space. There's just tremendous opportunity embedded in the mall. It was relevant to a certain place in its current form to a certain point in time in terms of our economy and who we were in terms of our demographics. That era has passed. It now represents a terrific opportunity going forward. 
Uh, it's going to take a mix of public and private investment. I will say and look forward to questions if people want to know more about this, that uh, in every case I know public investment uh, in helping to build the new streets, uh, maybe re uh, uh, begin to build new structured parking to support denser, the denser development that actually supports life on the street represents a terrific investment. These aren't grants, they're investments in terms of the payback to the community. Uh, there are development agreements in place that uh, I think are worth taking a look at again is going forward. Uh, and finally, really talked about this. Uh, this is a place not just to come and spend money or even to live, work and play, but this should uh, be even can be even more of the civic heart, the place that brings everybody in Moorhead uh, together. Uh, so another one of our strategies is uh, uh, evaluating Woodlawn Point. And I will say that I know that this is a big discussion at the City Council, uh, what the direction will be for Woodlawn Point. Uh, Woodlawn Point is, uh, you know, uh, it's in our study area. It's adjacent to the heart of downtown. And many people who live around this site walk to and from downtown. So we evaluated it at that level. Um, and so one of the th first things that we were thinking about is that there needs to be uh, a consensus built on the site priorities. Uh, the council should continue to have that discussion about what the future is for this site. It is city owned. There needs to be some direction for the future, whatever that is. Uh, one of our tasks was to draft an RFQ. That is not an RFQ that's going to go on the ground anytime soon. The council still needs to have that discussion about building consensus on priorities. It is part of the appendix um, if and when it is needed, uh, but that is just something that was a part of this process. Uh, the the zoning in this site uh, may not allow what, uh, some of the elements that you might want, uh, including a little bit more density in resi residential. If you want to have some ancillary uh, service like a coffee shop or some other retail, so um, rezoning the site might be uh, something that would help uh, developers who might be looking at it in the future set a kind of uh, a consistent view of what they might be able to achieve um, and it might set uh, some better direction. And then, of course, determining what public funding is out there to support the type of uses. What we heard when we discussed this site with the public is that they really this the, the the location of this site cannot be beat along the river just south of the heart of downtown the views the the natural adjacency uh it really cannot be beat uh and so a lot of people talked about the fact that like can't we do a little bit of both can't we have more recreation or um uh river oriented functionality at the site, but at the same time, getting more um, uh, development, uh, more uses that would really complement the surrounding area. So that's, um, I think, what uh, people were interested in, um, but obviously this would need a lot more conversation. The underpass is another topic that we evaluate in this process that I know is um, uh, under consideration as well. Uh, so one of the things that we did uh, was Joe Polachek built this incredible uh, basic kind of 3D uh, model for engagement with the public because I think particularly at that time in early February when the flyover video was just coming out, um, I think the public just was really, they just couldn't visualize what an underpass looked like on 11th. And so this really, this, this 3D model really helped in our public engagement explain what this is and the benefits of the underpass for traffic uh, movement, but also that they're just, we want to make sure that it doesn't cut off the Creative Pioneers District from what's going on in the heart of downtown. And so one of the first things to do with the underpass is continue collaborating um, on, on how to make sure it's compatible in downtown, working with the state. I know the state's going to issue an RFP at some point to create an underpass project that really supports all modes of transportation. So when you're down in the underpass, you still feel really comfortable as a pedestrian or a bicyclist.
And so there's more detail in the plan about this. And then just making sure that we, um, this is kind of fits the funky vibe of the Creative Pioneers District, really using artists uh, to create uh, fabulous murals for retaining walls and really do interactive, cool and safe lighting underneath any bridge uh, components. And so that does need to be a part of making this really a part of downtown. And so finally, we're on the next steps. Um, we went through kind of the trends, the vision for downtown, the concepts for character districts and street types and open space. And finally, a few of the um, uh, more critical uh, implementation strategies. Uh, as Derek talked about, this, will, this plan will hopefully go to the EDA next week uh, with an anticipated approval with the city council on December 14th if everything goes well. Uh, one of the first things you'll want to do is build immediate interest in downtown's revitalization through some early initiatives, those placemaking uh, elements, um, uh, really getting that design right for Center Avenue, things like that. And we know this is in the context of COVID. We can't uh, dismiss uh, the, the, the plan from the current conditions going on, but we also know that downtown will be coming back like other places. It might look a little different, but really getting particularly some of these public realm improvements, right? These things that the city can control uh, is going to show uh, that you are in this for, for your constituents. Um, a next thing that you might do is develop a specific city work plan for uh, 2021 to 2025, and then implementation goals for the five years beyond that. What is, how do you uh, incorporate some of these recommendations into your CIP? Uh, what are some of your financing priorities and funding priorities? And then continue to build that strong working partnership with MnDOT on their uh, rights of way and other entities on priority projects. and. The underpass is an example of that. 